On today's show, we're talking about the minor leagues. More specifically, we're talking about the rankings. Volpe, Dominguez, Peraza, and possibly more. All next on a brand new Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Happy Monday. It is January 30th. It's January 30th. We're almost in February. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. If you're new, I'm a baseball writer and a podcast host for the Locked On Network. I've written for places like ESPN, Baseball Prospectus, and the Hardball Times, and I've been hosting Locked On Yankees since 2018. My fifth anniversary will be in either June or July, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Yankees, all one word. You can follow me on Twitter at Stay Scotts. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also hit the thumbs up button. If you're not watching on audio, I just put my thumbs up. Um, and you click the bell so you're notified as soon as our videos go live. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So, rankings. We're going to be looking at MLB Pipeline. Baseball Prospectus's top 101, and we're going to be looking at Keith Law's rankings from The Athletic. And I'm going to be reading Keith Law's blurbs from The Athletic. Um, in every list, Anthony Volpe is your first Yankees prospect. He's always the highest. And then depending on which list we're looking at, it's either Dominguez Peraza or Peraza Dominguez. And then there's also a fourth guy sometimes that's not always in the rankings. So, hey, it's like a surprise when you look at these lists. So let's look at Keith Law because, like I said, I wanted to look at the blurbs that he wrote about the players. Volpe is ranked eighth on his list. It's on The Athletic. Last year, Volpe was number 10 overall in baseball. And obviously, he's the Yankees' highest ranking prospect. So... This is what he said. Volpe got off to a terrible start in 2022, which we all knew because we were talking about it during the season. He hit 203, 312, 373 through the end of May, and that included a four-hit game on May 28th. And Law said that he'd been working on swing changes in those two months, but in late May, early June, he decided to go back to his old swing, and that helped him because the rest of the way, he hit 279, 369, 528 for double A Somerset, and that earned him his promotion up to Scranton. Now, this is what Law says Volpe has a beautiful right handed swing. I don't know why anyone would try to mess with it. It produces a lot of quality contact and keeps the ball in the air for extra base power, although I think he'll settle in as more of a high doubles guy who might hit 20 homers than a 30 homer guy. He said that Volpe is a 55 to 60 runner. I believe that's on a scale up to 80. But it plays up on the bases because he has great instincts, both for reading pitchers and reading situations. He says while he's at shortstop, he's got great hands and gets himself into the right position to make plays more than most shortstops I see. Law also says, I caught a lot of Volpe last year, and he was playing a different game than his teammates. We talk about how the game speeds up for some players as they move up the ladder. Volpe plays like the game is too slow and he's waiting for it to catch up. I don't know for a fact that the Yankees have sat out the free agent shortstop market because they think Volpe is a star, but I think Volpe is a star, so I can hardly blame them. I mean, that sounds good to me. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. So he's ranked eighth there. He's ranked seventh in baseball prospectuses, top 101, and he's ranked fifth on the MLB pipeline. So I found that interesting. The next Yankee on the list, on Law's list, I should say, is Jason Dominguez at number 32. 
Dominguez, as you know, he's only 19. He's 5'10", 190. And last year, he was ranked number 78 on Law's list. And <laughs> this is what he said about Dominguez. <laughs> it's so true, though. Is there a bigger example of a post-hype prospect than Dominguez, touted as the next Mickey Mantle as the Yankees gave him their entire international bonus pool when he was 16? He didn't get to play in a minor league game until he turned 18 because of the pandemic. That is true. <laughs> Law said he hit a very credible 258 346, 398 in full season ball for low A Tampa in the pitcher friendly Florida State League in 2021 as one of the only three 18 year olds to get at least 200 plate appearances in the league, along with Alex Ramirez, who I believe is a Met prospect. Um, when Dominguez returned to Tampa this year as a 19 year old, which is still young for that level, he improved to 265, 373, 440. And he moved up to Hudson Valley. I didn't get to see him, even though he's only like 40 minutes from my house. And he hit 306, 397, 510. And then he finished with a week in double A Somerset. So Law says, I'll recap. He started 2022 with 57 games of pro experience total. And that's all he had 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 since the signing in July of 2019. He ended up hitting well enough in high A that he would have finished in the top 10 in the Sally League in OBP and slugging if he had qualified. Why do I get the sense that people think he's a disappointment? And it's not like he lacks tools. He has electric bat speed, 70 raw power, 70 run, and probably 70 defend in center. He does have work to do as a hitter, and during that one week in AA, you could see he needs to learn to adjust to pitchers who can change speeds on him and locate their secondary stuff more than anything he's seen before. The body is maxed out, but there's also no need for him to get stronger or develop more power. I see a guy with three plus plus tools who is of the age of a college sophomore and has earned his way to double A. What's not to like? So, yes, the point for Dominguez is he's still really young. People are putting too much pressure on him. He's still a baby, okay? I have, my brother doesn't like when I refer to young boys as, or young girls as babies, but compared to other players, 19 is very young. And yeah, Dominguez did well enough in his first full year of playing. So, you know, don't get too hyped about him yet. He's still extreme, extremely young, but... There is a lot of potential there, and he might be a lot of fun for us to watch when he finally does make it up to the big league level. Because the Yankees don't really want to part with him either. Um, teams were asking for him in packages, and the Yankees, well, you know, some teams were thinking that the Yankees were going to part with their top three prospects and hoping to put Volpe, Peraza, and Dominguez into one package, and the Yankees were like, <laughs> no. Nice try, though, but no. So in a moment, we'll tell you where Dominguez ranks on the rest of the lists, and we're going to look at that third prospect that I already mentioned. But first, this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that betting on sports is fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown I bet but if you want to try that the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe secure and easy to use best of all you can get paid your winnings instantly pretty cool so join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 that's FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel official sports book partner of the NFL Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. You can make your second listen Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So the third name on Law's list is Oswald Peraza. And this is what he says about him. The Yankees have an enviable problem in their upper minors. Their shortstop of the future, Anthony Volpe, isn't actually their best defensive shortstop prospect, who is also a very promising player in his own right. Peraza is a plus defender at short right now and a plus runner with enough power that he could be someone's starter right now in the big leagues. He could be the Yankees starter. <sighs> if they had brains. 
Hmm. He's power over hit, however, as he jumps early in the count and needs to be more selective. He only saw about 3.6 pitches per plate appearance in AAA, and his approach is too pull-oriented. If he tries to use the whole field more, which he can do effectively because he covers the outer third pretty well, he has a chance to be more excuse me, has a chance to be a more complete hitter without sacrificing that much power. He's got a pretty high floor, even if he's a 290 OBP, OBP hitter, because he might be worth 8 to 10 runs with his glove and hit 15 to 20 homers. There's a better player in there, though, if he becomes more selective and less pull-centric. Again, he could be a starter. Hmm. Who could he start for? <laughs> The Yankees were so close to getting it right in the play. They were so close to getting it right in the playoffs. And then what do they do? They put the guy that they took out because he couldn't play defense and put him in an elimination game. And okay, we're talking about prospects. I can't, I can't go nuts about IKF because I'll be doing that enough during the season if he sees too much time playing. And then number 86 on this list is Everson Pereira outfielder New York Yankees last year he was a sleeper this year he's number 86 now he signed with the Yankees for 1.5 million dollars back in 2017 due to a number of injuries and the pandemic he entered 2022 with only 108 pro games and fewer than 500 career plate appearances he finally got a full season in 2022 and he showed why the Yanks invested in his future with some power some speed some defense and some crudeness at the plate that you might expect from a 21 year old with such limited experience He's still a very good athlete who shows excellent back, bat speed and good carry off the bat with above average game power right now that's trending toward plus. With his contact quality at age 21, he's got a good chance to end up a 25 to 30 homer guy at his peak. Hey, that sounds good to me. His approach is still raw with a strikeout rate of 27% in high A and 30% after a midseason promotion to double A. But he also swings at too many pitchers, pitches and expanding the zone down or away. He's at least a major league average defender in center right now, also trending the right way, although whether he ends up plus there depends on how much he fills out physically. He's still a high variance prospect who could never make enough contact to be a regular, but just by virtue of staying healthy for 102 games last season, he showed that he at least has the potential to be an impact hitter who hits for average and power while providing value on defense. So that's good. Now it's funny because... This list has those four guys. And then you look at the other lists, and Spencer Jones is in there. He's on, I believe he's on the top 101. I'll check it again. The top 101 list for baseball prospectus. And as I was scrolling through these and looking at the lists and seeing some of the names... You know, some names really jumped out to me, like Drew Jones, Andrew Jones' son. That's just, I know everyone's kids are playing. I see Vlad Jr. playing all the time. You know, all the guys on the Blue Jays who are kids of baseball players now. And, you know, Jack Leiter's just around the corner. And it's just, yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. So the Baseball Prospectus Top 101, Volpe is number seven. Oswald Peraza is 48. Spencer Jones, 57. He's the one the Yankees um, drafted this year who is tall like Aaron, Aaron Judge and also plays outfield like Aaron Judge. Jason Dominguez is at 63. And I believe those are the four guys on the BP list. And then when you look at MLB Pipeline, Volpe is number five on this list. And then you have Dominguez at 47. Peraza at 52, and I don't think there are any more Yankees on this list. So everything is subjective, really. Um, You know, the exciting thing is baseball has this many prospects to look at, and the Yankees have that many prospects to look at, but I would like for Volpe and Peraza to be the ones battling for shortstop. I want IKF on the bench earning $6 million or somehow being traded. I don't know how. I'm not good with that stuff, but if they can do that and bring the kids in, they should. You kept them for a reason. You didn't go after the best shortstops in free agency the past two seasons for a reason. Stop playing IKF when you have these kids at your disposal. 
Keith Law says that Oswald Peraza can already start. Why aren't the Yankees seeing it? Your guess is as good as mine. So in a moment, we have other news going on. Glaber Torres avoids arbitration. And Kyle Agashioka is happy. He's very happy because the Yankees have Carlos Rodon. And you know what? I'd be happy too. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? You gotta try a Bilt Bar. We just got through the holidays. And I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise taste, then I've got the thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. And they're perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, they're covered in 100% chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. They come in unbelievably amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait for a box. For years, we've been telling you about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. So as I said, Glaber Torres avoids arbitration. And I found it amusing. I found the number that he is getting amusing for some reason. Torres had asked for a raise from 6.25 million to 10.2 million. And he ended up getting 9.95 million. Oh, so close to 10. Not quite there because, you know, the Yankees are, you know, trying to save their money. <laughs> if you recall, the 26-year-old Torres, who is no longer 22, hit 257 with 24 home runs, 76 runs batted in in 140 games. And uh, he just really had one bad month last year. Really. He was looking better. He really was. I felt it like he was looking better last year than he had the previous two seasons. And uh, hopefully he'll continue on that upward trend now that he's making nearly $10 million. Good for him, though. He should have gotten $10 million just for what he did in 2019. Because that's amazing. Kyle Higashioka did a phone interview with The Athletic. Oh, Brendan Cuddy, moving from... NewJersey.com to The Athletic to cover the Yankees, taking over for Lindsay Adler, who now is with Wall Street Journal. So Brendan Cuddy is still on the Yankees beat, but he's working for The Athletic, in case you didn't know. So he did a phone interview with Kyle Higashioka, and Higgy talked about the Yankees' excitement about Peraza, Oswaldo Cabrera, Volpe, the arrival of Carlos Rodon. He's talking about Aaron Judge's free agency and how he thinks his longtime friend Aaron Hicks could bounce back. Higgy, please. Please, please, please. Higashioka said that the vibe in the clubhouse about Oswald Peraza was very good. He said, man, this kid is pretty good. He said it's not that easy to come up and play well immediately. Because by the end of the regular season, he ended up hitting 306 with a home run, in just over 49 at bats. And as I said, you know, they had him start in the playoffs and for some reason didn't keep him starting and they should have because it really bit them in the rear end. Yeah. So Cuddy said to Higashioka, you're going to catch a second ace type pitcher this year in Carlos Rodon alongside Garrett Cole. What excites you about catching Rodon? Higgy said, I think it's important to learn him as a pitcher before we put any of our own spin on things. I think it's important to figure out what makes him work the best before we throw a suggestion here or there. Not that we ever try to change anyone. As a catcher, you want to get the best out of a pitcher. It really, he said behooves, it really behooves you to learn how they are and why they do what they do when they're at their best so that either we can keep them there or if they're struggling, we can get back there. I can't believe he said behooves. I'm trying to... Have I ever heard anyone say behoove to me in a sentence? 
It would be no. I don't think I have in my uh, nearly forty nine years on Earth. That's just really funny. What was something about Peraza that stood out to you last year? It seemed like nothing really faced him. You could see the same thing with Cabrera. But Peraza came up and did his thing, and it was almost like quietly he started hitting 300-something. We started seeing him putting together better performances as he went, and we could see some of the glove a little bit from the times he got to play shortstop, and we are like, man, this kid's pretty good. This kid's pretty good. He's quietly putting together a really solid month. Even playing once a week or whatever it was, it was pretty cool to see. I wish you could have said, I wish we could have seen more. (laughs) When you look ahead to this coming season, what do you see as your goal? I've shown in parts of seasons that I have potential to really impact the team at the plate. The defense has been there pretty consistently. I want to maintain that. But at the plate, I've shown bits and pieces that I can contribute in a good way. So this year, I'm really trying to dial in those kinds of performances consistently for an entire season. My second half was the most productive of my career, actually propelled me to my most productive season of my career. I only wonder what it could have looked like at the end if I had started with that kind of consistency. I think that's the big thing, trying to take what I learned at the end of last year and try to apply it now going into the beginning of this season and hopefully have a good full season of offensive production. Your lips to the universe's ears. Now, this is what he said about Hicks. You played against Aaron Hicks in high school in California, and you've known each other a long time. What is it about him that makes you think that he can bounce back from last year? Higgy says, it's the confidence. He's definitely got to work hard, and he's got to prepare himself as best as possible for this season. But in his mind, I think he's got to block out some of that exterior noise that I'm sure he's hearing. (laughs) Would that be the Yankee fans booing him (laughs) vociferously? Could that be it? It's no secret that he had a tough time, or he got a tough time from the fans last year. I think he's going to do his best to block that out and regain the confidence that he always typically plays with, and that's going to let his true talent come out. I think the difficult reception from the fans definitely took a toll on him a little bit, or at least on the performance a little bit. I think he's mentally tough enough to overcome that and win the fans back and have another good season. Again, your lips to whoever's running the universe's ears. Because the Yankees are so much better if Aaron Hicks is healthy and can hit. It's just true because having him being able to hit from both sides of the plate and defending and doing what he does would go a long way and help the team a lot. So, um, again, let's hope that um, (laughs) – let's just hope he's healthy. Although I said that last year. And at the beginning of the year, I said that it was probably going to take some time for him to – get back into the swing of things. Nice pun, but it's true because of the wrist injury. And then it just, it never happened. And the last two questions are about Judge. What was your read on your friend Aaron Judge's free agency as it was happening? And Higgy said, I know he loves New York. He's pretty open about that. In my mind, I didn't want to bombard him with a bunch of questions all off season about it. So I would stay away from it. We just talked about other stuff. In my mind, I didn't really have that much of a doubt. I had a good feeling he was going to resign. And then Cuddy asked him, was it a relief for you when it was over? And he signed. A player like him is pretty much irreplaceable. To lose him potentially would have been devastating. No kidding. (laughs) No kidding. I said it how many times on the show? But I also said that the same thing as Higashioka. Judge made it known that he loves New York. He dropped, he said it. He said, I didn't just drop breadcrumbs. I was dropping full loaves of bread to show you people that I loved New York. And yeah, I mean, the Giants would have had to really offer him the sun and the moon in order for him to go there. But I really don't think there was a chance of him to leave. There wasn't a chance of him leaving New York unless the Yankees insulted him a lot. But even the Yankees are not that silly. So they didn't. Thank goodness. Yeah. So to recap, the Yankees have five good prospects and different combinations of them landed on three different lists. Keith Law, Baseball prospectus and the MLB pipeline, and we have exciting things to look forward to. You could see both Volpe and Peraza together on the field at Yankee Stadium at some point this season. You won't see Jason Dominguez yet. You won't see him yet. It's possible, though, that if he plays well enough in Somerset, if he starts there again, maybe he goes to AAA and maybe the people in Scranton will see Jason Dominguez. That could be cool. So yeah, there's there's some bright future stuff coming for the Yankees. Let's not jinx it, though. 
because we know how sometimes the prospects don't pan out. But this is pretty exciting. And, you know, these kids seem to be okay with the pressure. Like Higgy said about Peraza, he did well when he came up. You know, it took him a little bit to start hitting, but it didn't look like a kid coming up and playing Major League Baseball for the first time. He pretty much slid right in and fit in. And, you know, we might have some exciting things to watch in 2023. So that's pretty cool. Gleyber Torres avoids arbitration. Kyle Higashioka is excited about 2023. And you know what? I am too, because it's almost here. We are almost at the season. Isn't that crazy to think about? In two months, yeah, two months, the end of March, the season starts. So we're almost there. So that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can listen to us on every podcasting platform available. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, hit the thumbs up button and comment on YouTube as well. You can also click the bell so you know when our videos go up. Thanks for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So enjoy your Monday and I will talk to you all tomorrow.